You believe you can be freed from fear? Do you believe that you can? I will have to share. I hadn't planned on sharing this, but I used to be terrified of flying. I, I would just have nightmares over it. And I remember Dion and Sarah both saying things that helped, but the Lord delivered me. Uh, now we've flown several times. We were able to go overseas, and I just look forward to flying. Some of you will not be able to believe that. And then I had a fear of, an unhealthy fear of the weather, especially tornadoes. Yes, Keith can share. I have missed work. It, it was an unhealthy fear. And the Lord, when we moved to Stuttgart, the Lord delivered me from that. There was a tornado at, at England. I went to bed and went to sleep. I said, I'm tired. I cannot. The Lord has delivered me. He can deliver you from your fears. Well, it's good to be here. For those who don't me, I'm Linda Corpier, my husband Keith, and I were members here. We moved to Stuttgart to plant a church of the Nazarene. And just very briefly, I would like to say that is going well. We've had ups and downs, but we have grown this year in person and online. We have a new lady online that's just fired up. She sends me text, and then two young ladies in their mid-20s, they're coming regularly. Uh, last week, we had two new visitors, and one is coming again this week, so we're grateful. It's slow growth, but we're grateful for what God's doing, especially for a man we had been praying for for a long time, and he shared with me this week about being a believer in Christ. He almost broke down when he shared it. So we are praising the Lord for delivering him, setting him free. Others have told me, what, what's happened to him? I said, he's been transformed by Jesus. So we're praising the Lord for that. Uh, share briefly, some have heard it who came last week, but we had problem with our roof. We've had a problem since we've been there. Finally, we met with the owner, and he was finally going to put a new roof on. It's leaked and leaked, and someone had told me they might could put a pitched roof on for us, and so I, I happened to mention that, and he said, well, let me wait and see, so we waited and waited. Long story short, we've been there almost a year and a half, and in January, when we had the snow, it froze, and from January, Keith and I spent at least three weekends in a row replacing ceiling tiles, 15 that had fallen, insulation we were cutting that it was getting tiring it was hard to get the water up and we had finally said we are not going to be able to stay here we, we can't he's not fixing the roof we can't continue to to do this work and so in a desperate prayer a prayer of desperation i prayed in a ministry class and there was a young man who obeyed god listened heard god and obeyed he said the lord said Bryce, you can repair their roof for them. And he came out and repaired it. He had help, and we're just praising the Lord. The Lord came through at the midnight hour. I don't know if you've ever heard that, but at the final moment, at the midnight hour, God came through, and we have that new roof. So I praise the Lord for that. And we love you. We appreciate you, and thank you for your support. Casey still helps us, and Betty, and all of you who come out. It means so much. Well, today we're going to talk about a watchman. It's a watchman's prayer service. It's a little different. It's interactive. It's actually one of our favorite services at Stuttgart. We do it about three times a year. It's so powerful. So what's a watchman? A watchman were guards in the Bible that were responsible for protecting towns from enemy attacks and dangers. Uh, often the cities would put these watchmen in high walls or watchtowers. They would warn the people and the townspeople of impending threats. They were always on alert. It means one who looks out. They could be looking for approaching friends or enemies. So the Bible refers to watchmen in a spiritual sense. God tells Ezekiel, son of man, I have made you a watchman for my people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and warn them. So that's the job. That's our job. If we're not praying for our friends and our family in the world, who is? There is no one that will. Uh, we can share God's word with them and share truth. But in the end, it's love that wins. It's love that wins those who are apart from God. And I appreciate those who have shown love. When we show love to others who people look down on, we are serving Christ. That's the best way we can serve. And thank you. You have done that. Well, today we're going to have a watchman's prayer service. And there are several people who are going to participate in this. I want to thank them. We're going to be praying for our families, our church, and our nation. So in this next hour, as we get started, uh, Charlotte and Aubrey are going to come at this time. Aubrey will read the scripture, and Charlotte will pray. 
Psalms 46.10 says, he says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today, help us this morning to be still and know that thou art God. We want to make to humble ourselves before you and dedicate this service to you. I pray the Holy Spirit will have control in this service, in our lives, physically, mentally, and spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So this section is confession. Uh, I've had to confess recently over things that the Lord has revealed to me. Um, sin. What is sin? Someone asked us. We were actually asked at Stuttgart, what is sin? Well, our manual says it's a voluntary violation of a known law of God by a morally responsible person. So what does that mean? That means we are willfully doing something uh, that's wrong, that we know is wrong. We, we know what sin is, don't we? Larry, I still have the Ten Commandments Garrett made. It's in my office at home. Don't put anything before God. Use God's name with respect. Keep his day holy. Honor your father and mother. Don't commit adultery, steal, lie, or covet. But I was reading in James. James 2 says, My brothers as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. You really keep the law found in Scripture, which is love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin. The Lord has disciplined me over that one, and I struggle with it. Not showing favoritism. Who is wise? Let him show it by a good life. Wisdom uh, that comes down from heaven is, is uh, from God. It's not being envious or selfish, because where you find that, you find evil practices. Pride, envy, gluttony. Galatians says sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, and selfish ambition. You, you know what those are. I'll just read a few more. Mark says what comes out of a person is what defiles them. What comes out of their hearts are evil thoughts, sexual immorality, murder, greed, deceit, envy, arrogance, and folly. Proverbs says there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community among the brothers. That's in the church, who gossips and shares unfounded accusations among Christians. A sincere and thorough change of mind and not being sorry, but it's turning from wrong. God can deliver us from that. Let's pray. Lord, we confess to you now that um, we have not loved you with all our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We want to take just a few moments now, Lord, and let you reveal to us anything that we might need to confess to you. Psalms 4, 1 says, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress and have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Let's uh, say the Lord that taught the disciples. Let's say that together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now we're to actually my favorite part of the service. It's prayer, praise and thanksgiving. Cassie is going to come and read the scripture. And then Macy and Aubrey are going to sing a song of praise. Psalms 106 verse 1 says, 
Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Go. It's got red right now. <laughs> okay, praise and thanksgiving. Do we not have a lot to be praised and thanksgiving for? I mean, you guys got a good uh, service here today, good number of people here, a wonderful church building to come in and worship the Lord. But how many remember Jimmy Reynolds as our music director here? I remember after every service just about, and then Ken continued it, uh, the doxology. 
you know, as a kid, you can think of songs that you used to you used to sing when you were a kid. Now, how many sang Jesus loves me? This I know, for the Bible tells me. So we all remember that. But we also remember the doxology. And it's a simple song. And I still love hearing it at the end of each services. I mean, maybe it's because that's what we grew up with or whatever. But I still remember it. And I love singing it at the end of each service. But it goes, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. All creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The song was written in 1674 by Thomas Ken as a final verse to, for two hymns, Awake My Soul and Glory to Thee, My God This Night, intended for morning and evening worship services at Winchester College. In addition to the Psalms 106.1, Praise and Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Other Bible verses that gives praises. Psalm 7, 17. I will give thanks to the Lord because of His righteousness. I will sing the praises of His name, the Lord Most High. <clears throat> And also Psalms 9, 1. I will give thanks to you with my heart. I will tell you all of the wonderful deeds. What better way to give the word praise than go out and tell the world about our Jesus? You cannot give more praise because it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and we have to know him as our Lord and Savior or we won't go to heaven. And But it is a free gift. All we have to do is accept it. I mean like free I like free, <laughs> you know. And he died on that cross. He's already paid for us. He's already paid for us. All we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior and praise him. <clears throat> In 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 6 through 18, Rejoice always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances that this is God's will for you in Jesus. And sometimes we wonder, this is God's will? Because it doesn't go the way we want it to go. You know, we're kind of stubborn. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands if you're, say you're not stubborn, but sometimes we're a little bit stubborn and we don't understand why God does these things to us. It wasn't our will, but it was actually God's will. We just didn't see it at the time. We need to pray every day, give thanks to our Lord in every circumstance, good or bad. And it's hard to give Him praise when things aren't going quite right, but it's all in the plan. Uh, and it would not be our choosing, but we need to praise to the Lord with thanks for being with us during times of hardship. He only know, he knows what is best. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we praise you today and give thanks for all that you do for us. Thank you for the word of God. Through your word in the Bible, we know Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin. By the, blood of your, by the blood of you, you saved us. God, you are so good. Thank you for the miracle of your touch to heal us, the healing of our sinful hearts, and also healing our physical body that we may be plagued by illness or disease. We only need to come to you by faith and pray, and you will be with us as we walk through this life. Thank you for the peace and comfort that only you can give. Thank you, Lord, for our family that you have blessed us with. Thank you for our church family and the love and support we give to each and every one of us. Amen. So we want at this time to give the Lord praise. The Lord has done great things for all of us. While we were here, the Lord answered some amazing prayers. I'm going to start. I'm just going to share one. Uh, Keith has something he wants to share, and you do not have to come forward to share something that God has done, something you're thankful for. We can uh, just bring the mic to you, or you can stand where you are. Um, but when we lived in East End, uh, my blood pressure started running really low, so the doctor wanted to do a stress test. And after he did the stress test, there was a problem with it, so he wanted to do an arteriogram. 
So he went up through the wrist. I had it done. I seemed fine. I went out to eat afterwards. But that night at home, I was sitting on the couch, and it seemed like my vision on each, each side, my vision became darker. And I thought, well, that's odd. I blinked, and I thought, am I seeing right? I tried to look around and thought, that's a little strange. And then in a few minutes, that vision went even blacker on each side of my, of my face. And I thought, something is dreadfully wrong. So we called the, the doctor, the emergency doctor on call, and he said, you need to get to the emergency room immediately. Well, by his voice, I knew something was serious. And, of course, it scared me. We jumped in the vehicle. We were on Carl Morin Road. We were halfway down Carl Morin. And I don't know if Charlotte called me or I called Charlotte. We can neither remember, but Charlotte called. I told her what was going on, and we prayed together. And as soon as we finished that prayer, my vision returned completely right at that moment that that prayer ended my vision was restored God had healed me by the end of Carl Morn we called the doctor back and he said there's no you can see the relief hear the relief there's no need to come you're fine so I praise the Lord he healed me then he's done so many things I could share with you for an hour uh, what all he has done but I'm going to let you have an opportunity and Keith is going to come and share about a time the Lord answered his prayer Do y'all believe God answers prayers? He does. He might not be the way we want to. Well, I'm not the brightest bulb in the light, okay? So, you know, you always need some extra cash laying around the house in case of emergencies and everything of that nature. You know, you always have a, some stash of cash. And well, back then, Linda and I hadn't been married too long, and we had quite a bit of cash where we could, if needed to, we could go and get it. I come up with the brilliant idea of hiding it. Well, as you get older, they say you lose part of your memory. Well, I must have started early because I could not remember where I put all, it's a very good large sum of money, where I put it. I had no idea where I put it. We bought, Linda and I started looking around and looking at every possible place we think it, I would have put it. She said, where'd you put it, Keith? And I said, I have no idea. It just was a blank to me. Now, how many have ever, put something away, to, then you could not rem you guys are coming by the way, y'all just not up there yet, could not remember where I put that money. And we looked over the whole house, we looked upstairs, we looked downstairs, we looked everywhere, and we said, I don't know what to do, so you know what I did? Prayed. Now, God didn't tell me verbally just where it was, but he more or less took me, I mean, it wasn't 30 seconds after I said amen, I walked back and he more or less said, do this. And I did what he told me to do. And guess what I found? There it was. God had answered our prayers, my prayer, because I began to get worried. I mean, <laughs> did I just throw away a large sum of money? <laughs> I don't remember where it's at. But God answered that prayer right then. And actually, I was thankful. <laughs> so... But God answers prayers. It may not be the way we want them to answer, but he helped me find that money. Amen. Okay, someone else want to share something God did for you? I, I know there's some. Many of you know my son was really sick a couple months ago. He literally died twice, and was in the ICU at UAMS for two weeks on life support. We didn't know if he was gonna make it, but the doctors called him a miracle because he did make it and he's doing so good now. He's out there riding dirt bikes with Dawson and just having a good time. And I'm just, all of our prayers have been answered. And I'm so grateful that I still have my son with me. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Someone else. This is the best part of the service. When you bless so much, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to just one thing, right? 
But I remember when I was getting ready to, uh, uh, I just got back from the desert in 2017, and we were trying to find out, you know, what our life is going to look back like now, you know, when Sarah and I got back together and uh, with the girls and, and trying to figure out, Lord, what it is that you want me to do? What's the path forward in my life? What do you want to do for, for us? Do I stay in the service? Do I retire? How are we going to make it? I know I joined the Army at 17. You know, 25 years is a long time to try to figure out what you're going to do when you're so comfortable in things. And I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. And so we were praying about it and, and a position at Children's Hospital. You know, I worked on helicopters and um, a position opened up at Children's Hospital. A buddy of mine called me and said, hey, you know, uh, uh, this uh, technician job's coming up out there. Would you be interested in, in taking this job? And I'm like... I don't know, I've never worked in the civilian world. You know what I mean? I've never worked in civilian aviation. It's totally different than how the Army operates and how the regulations are and things like that. And, and I'm like, I, I, so you start getting this self-doubt in yourself, like, hey, can I do this, you know? You might as well just stay where you're at, stay where you're comfortable, you know? Don't put yourself out there. And I'm like, and Sarah and I were praying about it and we're like, you know, this would be an awesome opportunity for no more deployments, no more time away. But then I still had that part in my heart was like, ah, I know I'm comfortable and I can do what I can do. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. And, uh, and so, cause I was still doing it. I was doing it full time at Camp Robinson. And, and so, you know, we prayed about it. And we we're like, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, you got to make it clear. You got to make it clear. Cause I, I don't, I don't know what to do. And uh, so I went and interviewed. I, I went and interviewed with Children's Hospital, and the uh, interview went really well. And, and then I'm like, Lord, I'm still looking for this vision. I'm still looking for this clarity. And, and it's, not, it's never about money, right? I mean, you want to be happy in the job. Well, it is about money, but it's also you want to be happy and content in the job that you're in. And uh, I remember Sarah and I sitting, and, and we're praying, and, and we're talking about it. And I was like, you know, I've got to be able to make enough money to support my family, right? and uh, do the things that we're doing. And at the time, I was a technician, and I was also in the military, right? So you got, I was getting two different paychecks. I'm like, Lord, i got to have something that's going to be able to support us in the, how we're living right now. And uh, they, after I had the interview, they came back and said, yes, they were interested in me, and they threw some, a number at me, and it was more than both of their jobs provided. I'm like, God, this is your sign telling me this is my time to go. And uh, I took that big boy step, and uh, God has just blessed us, blessed us in so many ways with this job. Yes, it's hectic like it is, but now I'm home with my family all the time. I go home every day, and they're still there. And uh, it was just, uh, yeah, I have not regretted. I miss the military, I miss the camaraderie, and I miss my friends and things like that, you know. Especially if you've served, you know what that's like. But I don't miss that part of that life, and God has provided such a better way. And I don't miss church on Sunday anymore either. So praise the Lord. I'm just so thankful. Amen. Thank you. Somebody else. Young or old. Well, uh, last Sunday, uh, Brother Shanner shared with us that he had a kidney stone. And so that brought to my mind, I, I got to talk to him after the service, and I shared with him what happened to me. And uh, Cheryl will tell you. So I wanted to share with y'all this morning, because I shared with him, I had a kidney stone about five or six years ago. I don't know, something like that, wasn't it, Cheryl? Never hurt so bad in my life. It was worse than what I went through at my hips. I went to the emergency room, and I mean, I was crying like a baby wallering on the floor and they got me in and did a quick exam says doctor said yeah you I'm pretty sure you got a kidney stone so give me come in told the nurse give me a shot of morphine give me a shot of morphine and about 10 minutes later the doctor come back in I was still wallering and hurting he said they give you that shot and I said yeah and you're still hurting I said yeah I'm, I was crying he said, I'm going to give you another shot. So he gave me a second shot of morphine. And then he says, I want you to do this, this, and this for the next seven, ten days or so. So after about five or six days, they give me some 
pain pills and it didn't help kind of subdued the pain and of course we've been praying that lord this this hurts bad well i had to go back to the emergency room i was hurting still still hurting so bad went back to the emergency room they gave me another shot and doc says we're gonna have to go in says you're not gonna pass that kidney stone it's too big because they did a scan <clears throat> so the day it was two days later i had to go as i recall up to the day surgery center and they, I got there, it was all I could do to walk out of the car into the surgery center. I was hurting, even on pain pills. And a doctor come in and said, well, we'll take you back. And he takes me back, give me something to relax me, lock me out. And he started to do the procedure. And I finally woke up. And he had a puzzled look on his face. He says, you didn't have no kidney stone. I said, yeah, I did, Doc. I was hurting so bad I couldn't hardly walk in there. He said, well, I went to do the procedure and did the little scope. They, he said, there's nothing there. So I praise God. God took it away. Now, why I had to go through that seven days of the pain before he took it, I don't know. God works in ways we don't understand. But sometimes it's to deepen your faith. Sometimes it's where he wants you to depend on him more and more and more. And... Uh, he does answer prayers. And he took that kidney stone away. Anybody else? Okay, Larry and uh, Addison are going to come at this time and pray the prayer of intercession. 1 Thessalonians 5.25 says, Brothers and sisters, pray for us. You did good. Good to see these young people get involved in in, the, in our church and doing things at our church. Uh, Linda asked me to share a prayer on intercession, you know, and go through, you, you know, ways to do that is you go through your church prayer list and your personal list and write down names in your journal uh, as you feel led to. Pray in earnest for them. Talk to the Heavenly Father about their needs. Weep over them if necessary. And uh, ask our Lord for our opportunity to witness or help. As you look at our bulletin, you see there's 26 names on our prayer list. We ought to be lifting these up each and every day. You know, there's, there's three situations there that not names, but they're prayer requests. You know, pray to support the Stuttgart Church plant. Pray to Pine Bluff Church plant. Unspoken requests. I'm betting everybody here has unspoken requests. Sometimes you don't know what to say or what to ask for. You can raise your hand for unspoken requests, so let's do that. So why is it important for intercessionary prayer? Where does your prayers go? They go to God. He collects them in like a offering plate. I don't know any. And what are them prayers used for in heaven? Do you all ever know that? Well, I read something from some commentaries and some theologians and their aspects. They're burning incense in heaven, and it gives out a sweet aroma. What incense are they burning? It's the prayers we send up to God. He takes those prayers, and he puts them, and it's sweet smelling to him. It's, sweet, it's our way of communicating to God, and he uses that to burn in their incense in heaven to put out the sweet aroma. So prayers are important. God wants to hear them, and he answers them on his time, not our time. So let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank thee, Lord, for the opportunities that we have to come before you, Lord, to, to pray for others, to step in an intercession for them. Sometimes someone don't have the words exactly to say for prayer, but they know need, need prayer, and they'll raise their hand for unspoken prayer requests. And there's some sometimes that because they're on the illnesses that they're dealing with are in 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 the hospitals and icus and they can't pray lord in their situation these are the ones we need to continue to lift up lift these prayers up heavenly father we ask each and every one here today to lift up prayers for those your loved ones your family acquaintances people going through hard times we know not what all circumstances but you give us opportunities to witness to others to deepen our faith to draw closer to thee 
Lord, just take these prayers, and we want to lift them up and put them in your plate, Lord, and uh, let you use them, Heavenly Father, according to your will. Just bring us closer to thee, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Carl is going to come and pray and lead us in a prayer for our church. The church is the body of believers that come together to worship Jesus. Uh, it's the church. Satan wants to keep the church divided because we are the ones who witness for Christ. We want people to come in and know Jesus. So let's, Kathy is going to read and Carl's going to pray. Philippians 1, 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on the completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this, this way about all of you. Since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And in this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Thank you, Cassie. A little taller. So this whole prayer that, that, that Cassie just read, or this, this scripture that Cassie read, it's not about an individual. It's about a church. It's about a church coming together and a church being one, right? Um, and don't get me wrong. I guarantee in the days of, of Paul that the church was, everyone had their ideas about different things, right? Whether it be generational, or it be political, or it be whatever it may be, but Paul was saying, it doesn't matter about all that stuff. When it comes down to it, it's about us loving one another. It's about us seeing beyond our differences. And loving one another. Because all those things are going to fall to the wayside. But when it comes down to is loving one another in Christ and have a relationship with one another that we're united on, and we can all be united on God's word, Right? So some of the things we need to leave at the door that cause division, right? Amen. I'm thankful that we live in a nation that we can, we can freely believe what we want to believe. We can, we can say what we want to say. Um, praise God for that. But when it comes to our church body, we have to put love above that, right? And uh, that's what Paul was trying to get at because these churches back then, they're no different than we are today. It just looks different, a little bit different as far as environment and community. So um, I'm going to lift up our church today. I'm going to pray for our church, especially since we've been going through a huge change since end of October, November time frame. But God has been so, praise, so faithful. Amen. God has been so good to us here at Spring Lake. I look in here right now, and our, our sanctuary looks kind of empty. And I know there's people that are gone because of different family things and things like that. But this isn't the end of Spring Lake. This is the beginning of Spring Lake, right? And I'm excited about seeing how God's going to move. The pastor that comes in is not going to fix everything, and we shouldn't expect that. The pastor is a flawed person just like we are, and we shouldn't put that burden on them. As we have to work with them, God's laid it on their heart to come here. And we have to work with them and support them and guide them and help them along the path um, as we take this journey. So that's going to be part of my prayer that I talked about today. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for Spring Lake Church in the Nazarene. I thank you so much, Lord, for the way that you shine your light on us, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for the people that are represented in this church today, Lord, uh, from the different generations to the younger. Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you for everyone here and the families that they represent. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for the pastor that's coming, Brian and Ashley and the three girls, Lord. I, I lift them up to you, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give him a clear vision, Lord, for Spring Lake, Lord, one that will bring us closer as a church family, Lord, but will also help us to be able to reach out to our community, Lord, beyond these four walls and, and meet people where they're at, Lord, and love them and share the gospel, share the love of Jesus Christ with them. I pray for the church staff, Lord, uh, where the laymen um, that work here at the church who keep the lights on and, and, and make sure we keep a balanced budget and fix the things that are broke and support the 
uh, outreach that we do and, and love on children and love on adults and, and uh, provide the, fills, the, the food for the potlucks and the, the funerals, Heavenly Father. It takes, it takes everyone here to be a part of that. It's not done by just a few or it shouldn't be done by just a few, but everyone, Lord. So I pray that you just speak to the heart of your people, Lord, and just help us to all get on board like Paul was saying. We love you so much, and we thank you for that. I pray for the families that are represented, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, for the families of, of loved ones that are here, that their children don't come to church, that they don't know you, Heavenly Father, Lord. I pray that the love of Jesus would just show, so uh, fill them, Lord, that, that they would be willing to and share the gospel with them, Lord. Sometimes it's harder to share the gospel with family than it is to with our friends or our coworkers, Lord. So I pray for those opportunities, Lord, for those conversations to be there where, where we can say the name of Jesus and share the love of Jesus and what he's done for us. I pray for our ministries here, Lord, whether it be Sunday school class or life group, Lord. I pray for the children's ministry, the teen ministry, the life groups that we do on Wednesday and Sunday nights, Heavenly Father, Lord, the outreach that we partake in, Lord. Um, and we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that, um, um, that you're glorified in everything that we do and say, Heavenly Father, that we're sharing the love, that we're teaching the gospel, Heavenly Father, and we're because I think that's kind of been lost a lot in, in the world today, Lord, is, is that, you know, people need to hear your word. They need to know your word, not just what someone says, but, Lord, fill our hearts with a desire to get into your word. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray for unity, harmony, and a renewal of love, and I've seen that, Lord. It's just been amazing how you've been moving, so I want to praise you and thank you, Lord, for that. You have been so, so good to us, Heavenly Father, and I thank you for that. I pray for the homebound, Heavenly Father, the widows and the widowers. I pray for Shirley Lewis, Lord. I know that she's moved on beyond our church here. She went to go live in a support group that's going to be able to help her out more, Lord. But we lift up Shirley to you, Lord. We lift up Rob and Vicki and the struggles that they've been facing each and every single day, Lord, and how challenging that's been, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, that that can't make it out, Heavenly Father. I pray that uh, we as a community um, of believers, Lord, that we're able to reach out to those folks and let them not feel alone, that they feel loved and still supported. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for uh, new members. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you just, uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, we have room to grow, Heavenly Father, and uh, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you help us to be able to reach those people, the people out in the community that don't have church homes. And that uh, when they do get here, Lord, that they feel loved and supported, uh, regardless of their social situations, Lord. Uh, I ask for, Lord, that you give us a vision here at Spring Lake, Lord, that you increase our attendance, Heavenly Father, Lord, and um, that uh, people can, once they get in these doors, they can feel the love of Jesus. They can feel the love of people here because we've got a great group of people here, Lord. You know it. And uh, just excited, Lord, about how you're going to move. Uh, we love you, we need you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We just have, we have a couple more, and Karen, thank you so much for coming. Karen's going to come and pray for our nation. Our nation needs prayer. Come on, Karen. Thank you. We'll include our missionaries. Let us pray. Lord, as a church, we come before you this morning with humble hearts. With these requests, Lord, we lift them up to you. We pray, Father, for our beloved country. We lift up to you, Lord, all the issues facing our public servants. We pray diligently for our president, our Congress, our governor, and our state legislators. We pray, Lord, for them to look beyond party lines and to seek your guidance in decisions that are made for the good of our nation and our state. Lord, we pray for our cities and our towns, our mayors and the local councils that make and enforce the laws in our state. We pray, Lord, that they will seek your guidance and wisdom as they lead these offices nationally and locally. Lord, we lift up our military we pray that you will keep our nation strong and that we continue as the strongest 
military in the world. We pray for protection, Lord, of our military men and women around the world, especially now in these times as more situations arise, becoming more dangerous for our troops and for our nation. We pray, Lord, for our law, and law enforcement and firefighters. Protect them daily as they never know when the next call may turn deadly. Surround them with courage and strength and always, Lord, with your protection. And last, Lord, we pray for our missionaries here in North America and around the globe. Protect them, refresh them, and strengthen them spiritually. Lord, place in their families, in our missionaries, true, true friendships, strong friendships. Bless them and keep them safe as they bring your love and salvation to the lost. We lift these requests up in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Our missionaries, one request they've had is that we would have friendship. So we are going to conclude now with praise. Amanda is going to come and read, and Jennifer will conclude our service with praise. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. He must have known about the heartbreak long before us. He must have known about the mistakes. Still, he chose us planted the tree where he would die, put thorns on the vine, and then wore them. And the love of the red stain, the beauty to expose. Maybe that's why God made roses. Sometimes it isn't always pretty, might hurt. But we have to remember to be patient and kind. And that was actually lyrics from a song called Roses. But let's just remember, let's just bow our heads and let's just pray. This week, I know everyone has prayed. And Lord, you have listened. You may not have answered each and every prayer, but we know you are there. And we have to be patient because it is all in your timing, Lord. Even if our big prayer was not answered, small ones were. And let us look and be grateful for those small blessings because not everything comes out in a large package. And just let us remain patient and understand your way, Lord. And let us listen to the spirit within us and praise you in the storms and celebrate you and rejoice in the good times. In your name, amen. Let's stand and we'll close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this service today. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for walking with us. Lord, we just love Spring Lake. I, I remember, Lord, when the, the framework was going up, our first memory is of Spring Lake and seeing the two befores and the building going up. I remember running from the basement all the way to the, to the top floor, and I was so excited about our church, Lord, and we love Spring Lake. We know that you have great plans for them. East End is booming with new families, Lord. And these families right now, some are having difficulty and challenges. They don't have hope. They don't have uh, joy because they don't know you. So we pray you would give Spring Lake that vision, Lord. Uh, give them the outreach that they need. And we pray that you would send people in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We pray your spirit to come and fill Spring Lake, Lord, so that people will want to come and say what is different about them. We want it, Lord. And we pray for our world. We do lift 
up Stuttgart to you as well, Lord. And, and thank you for Jennifer's words to be patient because we thought we would go down and have 30 people just immediately, and that hasn't happened, Lord. We are building, but it, it does take time, Lord. So we just thank you for what you're going to do. We know the church is alive and well because you're alive and well, and there's even greater days that are coming ahead, and we are excited about that. Just be with each person here, Lord. Bless them this week in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. That was a wonderful service. Um, I wanted to explain. I got a little excited up there earlier and, and didn't fully explain.